Hey guys, what's up? Janelle Ryan here. So I wanna have a serious talk with some of y'all about police brutality and the latest movement to put an end to these tragedies. Now I pride myself on having friends and colleagues from many different backgrounds, many different walks of life. So I'm not surprised that many of you don't get it. My life experiences are not going to be the same as your life experiences. My family's encounters are not going to be the same as your family's encounters. However, some of the comments and reasoning behind why you don't get it really don't make any sense to me and actually quite piss me off. So rather than continuing to remain silent, because that actually helps no one, I decided to make a video and break some of them down for you. So in no particular order, here we go. These criminals broke the law, or they had a criminal record, or their dad had a criminal record, or they were behaving in a criminal-like manner, criminal, criminal, criminal. So therefore, they deserve to die, or they did this to themselves. Like, I'm sorry, did I miss something? Since when did the police department get appointed to judge, jury, and executioner? Last time I checked, when somebody committed a crime or allegedly committed a crime, they were given the opportunity to a trial, to evidence being collected, being treated like a human being or innocent until proven guilty. And for the record, we're not saying that Mike Brown, Eric Garner, Vonderick Myers, or anybody was an angel. That's not what the point is here. The fact of the matter is they were human beings. Nobody's perfect, not even many of y'all. And for reference, I suggest you check out the Criming While White hashtag on Twitter in case you don't believe me. We're not looking for a saintly Jesus-like figure that the Pope will approve of. We are fighting for the human rights of other humans, the right not to be killed. And don't even get me started on the unpunished crimes of bankers and those bastards called the 1%. From tax fraud to junk mortgages, none of these people are even prosecuted. All they get is a slap on the hand, let alone being shot to death over some cigarettes. But seriously though, the police are supposed to protect and serve you, even those who allegedly commit a crime. Like Kajemi Powell, for example, who clearly had a mental illness or was under the influence. The police should have protected him from himself by either taking him to a mental health facility or a detox center in an ideal world, but instead they chose to execute him like a freaking dog in the middle of the street. They also could have subdued him in a non-lethal manner. It's so sad because in the video, you hear bystanders laughing because he's acting out. And as soon as the police arrive, he's dead within a couple of seconds and people are shocked. They're like, oh my God, they didn't have to do him like that. And it's true. You know, the police executed a man they were supposed to protect in front of the community that they serve. That community didn't feel threatened by that gentleman. They wanted him to get help. But unfortunately in this society, the only thing that you can do is call 911 and the police are usually the first ones to arrive. The disruptive behavior of the protesters. I love how you have so much to say about looting, burning down property, flags being destroyed, Diane's preventing you from shopping or seeing a freaking parade, but you haven't said one word about a loss of a human life. All you care about is that a couple of protests are disrupting your everyday flow of life. But I just have to say it again, a human life was lost and we are pissed about it. Now I'm not condoning looting or burning down property. I don't give a fuck about a flag though. But the mere act of protesting is meant to be an inconvenience, an irritation or an agitation, if you will. It's meant to catch people's attention, take them out of their comfort zone and force them to look society in the face. 
Good old fashioned civil disobedience, a persuasion tactic that's been in place since the beginning of time. I don't know why y'all act like protesting is brand new. You have to break the law to get these unjust laws changed, plain and simple. Not to mention how many people riot for dumb shit, like when your favorite sports team wins, for example. This, on the other hand, is real life shit. As a personal side note, I participated in one of the protests and it was an amazing experience being around such fearless people, people that are willing to do whatever it takes to voice their opinion and make what's wrong right. So many different colors and cultures united as one as we marched through the streets and people in their cars and trucks honked at us in support. Meanwhile, the police was trying to stop us, but we persisted. And one really amazing moment that I remember was a bus full of Hasidic Jews. I think they were on their way home from work. They started jumping out of their seats and banging on the windows, throwing up peace signs and thumbs up in support of the cause. It's the kind of stuff that brings you to tears. We were just exercising our First Amendment rights, by the way. So even if you don't quite understand the cause, you should at least be outraged that so many journalists and protesters are being brutalized by the police. Oh, and stop trying to say that none of the protesters have jobs. First of all, I got to the protest at five o'clock when I got out of work and I made it home by 11 o'clock. And then people who just got out of work at that time began their night of protesting right where we left off. So yeah, not all police are bad. What use are the good cops if what the bad cops do overshadows them? And what use are good cops if they witness what the bad cops do and don't say anything about it, whether it's while the act is occurring or after the fact? Are they even good cops at that point? In my opinion, they're silent cops. Can you imagine witnessing your friend or coworker rape a little girl and you don't do anything about it? Like you didn't commit the rape, you just saw it happen. So does that completely absolve you of all responsibility? Of course not. The law goes pretty damn hard on accomplices to crime, even those who allegedly had nothing to do with it. And the police are not gods. They're not holier than thou. So why don't we hold them to the same standard that we hold civilians? So then maybe eventually we can actually put our trust in the good cops that say they exist. Not to mention we indirectly pay the salary of the police department. So if we're not happy with the way they're protecting and serving us, then we are sure as hell entitled to our opinion and our demands for change. Respect the jury's decision. Now this sentiment is just plain dumb and downright apathetic. Not to mention counterproductive to the evolution of society as a whole. Do you know how many wrongly convicted people there are in jail right now? Or how many wrongly convicted people were let go just in time after being on death row? Or how many wrongly executed people were found innocent after the fact? So don't sit there and try to tell me that our justice system is perfect and doesn't have blood on its hands. Darren Wilson got a hefty ransom note for killing an unarmed teenager. He was literally rewarded and congratulated by the KKK. But the jury doesn't think it's worth it to take it to trial just for the racial implications alone? You've got to be kidding me. And to bring back my earlier point of needing to break the law in order to fix unjust laws, there are so many unjust laws that have been overturned or important laws instated, not because the government suddenly came to a realization, but because of the fearlessness of everyday people, such as interracial marriage, women's rights to vote, hate crime legislation. There's so many, I could do an entire video on it. So yeah, I'm not gonna respect the jury's decision. You're going to forget about this tomorrow, next week, next month. You know, 
Of all the stupid things I've heard people say, I really wish this one was the case. Because if it was, then it would mean that these tragedies did not keep happening. But the truth is they are. It's happening so often that I can't even keep the individual facts from each story straight. This person from this town who was wearing this outfit, doing this thing, and the police officer said X, Y, Z, and then the witnesses said otherwise, it's the same story over and over again. Just the little facts change. Hypothetically, let's say some of these cases of excessive police force were justified. How will we ever fucking know if we don't hold any of the cops accountable? These police departments don't even keep accurate detailed records. They leave the bodies in the street for hours or, or minutes at a time while they bleed out. And sometimes EMT doesn't even provide medical service. How could you not be suspicious of that? What are they hiding? What don't they want us to know? I have to say it again. These are human lives we are talking about. Every single encounter between a police officer and a civilian, especially a lethal one, needs to be well documented and accounted for. The lies, errors, omissions need to stop. It really pains me that even if we're able to reform many of these ridiculous methods of policing, that we'll never be able to bring these people back. But at the very least, we can't let their lives be in vain. We have to save somebody the heartbreak that these families are going through. Well, that's enough ranting for now. I really hope this video gets through to somebody. Too often I feel like we're just preaching to the choir, just talking amongst ourselves. But at the same time, dialogue is healthy and much needed at this point, so it's okay. What are some things you guys have heard being said about police brutality that don't make sense to you or that piss you off? Leave your responses in the comment section below. And be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's at The Janelle Show. Last but not least, subscribe to me on YouTube. See you later, guys.